In this video, I'm going to break down exactly how I landed my first software engineering internship with absolutely no experience and how you can get your first internship even in today's competitive market. My name is Amon and in college, I landed six software engineering internships from companies like Amazon, Shopify and HP, as well as multiple six figure SWE full time offers. But here's the part most people miss. When I got that very first internship, by definition, I had nothing no projects, no hackathons, and no clue how to solve leak code easies. I didn't even know what a technical interview was at that point. So if you're watching this with a blank resume and no idea where to start, you're not behind, you're early. This is the story of how I landed that very first opportunity and the exact strategy that helped me, and now dozens of my students, go from zero to software engineering offer. Let's get into it. Now, before we talk about the exact strategy of how I got my first internship and the exact strategy you can use to do the same, we need to talk about the first myth that's holding you back. And that myth is that you need experience to get experience. And look, I get it. You open up every job portal and see must have tiers of experience, publish three papers, open source contributions required, build a rocket that Elon's sending to Mars. But here's the truth. You don't need experience. You just need people to think you have experience. You need something that gets you off the ground. And no, it doesn't have to be a software engineering internship at Google. Now, let me show you how I applied that very principle to help me get that first software engineering internship in my freshman year. Let me take you all the way back to my freshman year of college before I landed offers at Amazon and Shopify. Back then, I could barely code. I had no resume, no connections, and definitely hadn't solved hundreds of problems on LeetCode. When I was trying to get my first real internship, my resume was essentially empty. So what did I do? What did I leverage to get that very first internship? Well, the good news is that back in high school, I did technically do an IT internship. But what did that IT internship actually entail? No, I didn't build applications for IT companies or write a single line of code. Instead, I spent the entire summer throwing broken computers into a dumpster. That was it. That was the whole job. No coding, no building apps, dumpster duty. But that is what made all the difference. It gave me something to put on my resume and it gave me something to build upon. And that's my first lesson you have to know. You can start anywhere. You just need something to put in your resume. Then I leveraged that IT internship to get research at the University of Iowa in my senior year of high school, which was still an unpaid experience. And then I leveraged that research to get my first paid software engineer internship in my freshman year of college at Modern Woodman. That was my first internship. It was nothing fancy, but it was a start. I then discovered lead code, started grinding and studying for coding interviews, and got a referral for John Deere, another local company, which was my next internship. From there, I worked my way up to Amazon and Shopify. But none of that would have happened without that first yes, without that first opportunity, that very first IT internship where I throw broken computers in the trash for free with zero pay. And once you get that first yes, whether it's a dumpster internship, a volunteer coding gig, or helping out a scrappy little startup, here's the rule. Do free work that actually counts. Be helpful, be reliable, and be consistent. You've got to ask smart questions and communicate what you're doing. Even if you just debug a single function, write some documentation, or fix a small bug, that's real work and real experience. So if you have no experience whatsoever, your only goal right now is to find your dumpster internship to land that first yes. And the way to do it, you don't chase Google, you don't chase Meta, you go small, you go local, you go where no one else is looking. I call this the small startup strategy. Now, what does a small startup strategy entail? The key of the small startup strategy is that you must forget Silicon Valley and forget unicorns. This is how you find the hidden opportunities, the early stage startups, the two person businesses, the little companies in your area area that desperately need help, but aren't drowning in 5,000 applications a week. This is exactly how I went from dumpster duty to research to insurance internship to FANG. You need to start local and small, and you should probably even stay away from tech companies in general. When I started out, how did I actually find the small insurance company to get an offer at? I literally Googled software engineering internships, my city in Iowa, IT internship in neighboring cities, software development intern in my state. You need to look for local IT firms, insurance companies, HVAC software companies, accounting software, literally anybody with an old website and some work to do. It's even better that these companies aren't well known because it means less competition and an easier foot in the door. Remember, your goal is to find a company that's not on every other computer science student's radar. That's where your shot is. This is about targeting early stage startups, tiny companies, or even niche local businesses. These are the kinds of places that aren't getting swarmed by 10,000 other computer science students just like you. It's the opposite of applying into the black hole of online portals for giant corporations. Here, you're going where the competition 
position is it? Your goal where a single email, conversation, or handshake can actually get you hired. And once you found one of these smaller, lesser known companies, here's the single greatest hack to make sure your application gets seen and not buried in some inbox purgatory. Referrals. The next thing you need to do to get that first internship is you must prioritize referrals. A referral is basically when someone inside the company vouches for you. Think of it like getting into a frat party. If you just walk up to the door and ask to come in, they'll probably say no. But if you walk him and say, yeah, I know Jake, they'll go back, ask Jake if he knows you, and if he says yes, boom, you're in. That's all a referral is, and here's why it matters. Companies get thousands of applications now. If you don't have much in your resume, it's hard to even get noticed. There's this invisible line you have to cross before they'll give you an interview, and a referral is one of the easiest ways to get over that line. Now, when I broke into John Deere, it wasn't through some kind of perfect resume or online application. It was through a referral. We had a family friend who worked at the company. He'd been there for over 10 years. He was high up. He literally just submitted a referral. And of course, that didn't just get me the offer. I still had to do multiple rounds of interview, practice lead code, and pass all of those. But that got me that first interview, that foot in the door. So how do you actually get a referral at this stage when you don't have anything? Well, here's the easiest way friends and family. Not only should you ask someone who works at a tech company or IT company, you should literally ask all of your friends and family if they know someone who works at an IT company. Think about old high school teachers, family friends, neighbors, anybody who might potentially have a connection at a company, you should be sending them a message. Similarly, your university professors, research or small projects are kind of like that other alternative which you can use to get that experience. So you should also be messaging your university computer science professors and saying, hey, I'm really trying to get my foot in the door with some research or small projects. Do you know of anything available or any labs I can help with? Most students don't even consider asking and that's your advantage. But here's what made the biggest difference for me. Talk to people who are ahead of you. This right here was one of the most powerful unlocks of my entire journey. You need to always assume that everyone knows at least one thing you don't because they do. So make sure to ask them about it. I think it was Jordan Peterson who said that and man, he's right. If someone you know interned at Amazon or Google or literally any big name, ask them what they did to get their first interview. Ask them what worked and what their prep is like. Ask them what they wish they did earlier and how they stood out. And honestly, just be nice and respectful. I've referred 20 plus people to Amazon just because they asked nicely. So be nice, be humble and be curious and let people help you because they will. Now, what's the best way to get a referral? No, it's not spam blasting 500 cold LinkedIn connection requests. It's showing them to career fairs. But come on, I thought career fairs were useless. Here's the thing. They're only useless if you show up unprepared and expect magic to happen. If you walk in knowing exactly what you want and how to pitch yourself, career fairs can be an absolute cheat code. Think about it. A career fair is basically speed dating between students and employers. You walk into a room half full with company booths, each with recruiters whose entire job that day is to meet people like you. Why do they do it? Because companies need to fill their internship and grab roles, and career fairs are one of the fastest ways for them to meet a ton of potential hires in one shot. They usually happen at universities or big conferences, especially around the fall recruiting season. And here's the best part. These recruiters aren't just there to hand out free pens. Their goal is to find candidates they can move straight into interviews. The reason why I'm telling you to go to career fairs is I have friends with no resume, no projects, no clue what they were doing, who walked into a computer science career fair, talked to a couple of recruiters, and left with a few interviews. So here's how you actually take advantage of the career fair and walk out with more than just stickers and tote bags. First, show up looking like you actually want a job. I'm talking clean clothes, maybe even a haircut, deodorant on. Trust me, that last one is underrated in the computer science community. You don't need a suit, but you need to look like you respect yourself and the people you're about to talk to. Confident, but humble. Next, you have to have your resume ready. Not some half-finished, crappy Google Doc, a clean, polished, printed copy. Recruiters still love a printed resume they can look at while talking to you. Now, it's very important to do your homework. Don't just wander from booth to booth asking, so what do you guys do? That's the quickest way to get ignored. Research every company beforehand, know what they build, know who they serve, and why you'd actually want to work there. And here's a big one. Practice your answer to tell me about yourself. At a career fair, that's basically your opener. It might sound something like, hey, I'm a computer science student at X university. I've got experience in XYZ and I'm really interested in this company because specific reason. That last part is huge. It shows you're not looking for any internship. You're looking for this one. And finally, I cannot stress this enough. After every single conversation, collect a business card or recruiter contact. And then as soon as you get home, follow up with an email thanking them, attaching a resume and reminding them who you are. If you do this at just one fair, you're already ahead of 95% of people who just stayed home. And here's the thing. This exact strategy is what we drill inside our software engineering accelerator program. We've helped students with zero experience land internships at Amazon, 
Google, Meta, and dozens of smaller startups just by executing these steps with precision. It's not about luck. It's about having a proven playbook and the right feedback so you don't waste months guessing. So if your goal is to land that very first internship, we've built a software engineering software to make it happen. Check out the top link in the description to learn more. Now let's talk about the final lever you can pull after you've already tried the warm routes. First, you go warm. Referrals, career fairs, and any in-person connections you can make. That's step one because it's always easier to get a yes from someone who's already seen your face or heard your name. But once you've worked those angles, that's when you start going cold. Another way of getting through the door that so many people underestimate but actually still works is cold outreach. Cold outreach is you reaching out to a stranger and asking for an opportunity. No, you're not cold applying into a black hole. You're not just hitting submit on some portal and praying. The goal of cold outreach is to actually connect with someone, to start a conversation that leads to a real opportunity. I know it sounds intimidating, but here's the thing. It works. In fact, it works way better than most people think, especially when you know how to do it right. In order to cold outreach successfully, one of the best places to aim at is startups, especially early stage startups, maybe even ones connected to your school. Why? Startups are small, they move fast, and they always need extra hands. So here's a move. Go to your university's entrepreneurship or innovation center website. They'll usually have a list of student-founded startups or small companies in the area. Search online for early stage companies in your city or niche you care about. Then find the founder's email. Here's a pro tip. LinkedIn combined with the company's website contact page is your best friend. Then you send them a short, specific cold email. And yes, I said short. Nobody's reading your life story. Cold emails literally changed my life. If you email 50 to 100 founders, professors, or small company owners, you're almost guaranteed to get at least one yes. I'm going to paste an exact script on screen right now. You're not asking for money. You're not asking for handholding. You're just showing up with value. That alone puts you in the top 10% of people who ever hit send. Now, all of this, the free work, the networking, the referrals, that's just to get your first unpaid experience. But once you've got that, you can start aiming for your first real internship. And here's where most people mess up. They stop. They get one line on their resume and think that's enough. Well, it's not. Because here's the thing, your resume is the first impression that gets you in the door. It's the handshake before the handshake. If it looks like a college essay instead of a professional document, you're dead before you even get to the interview. So before you send out a single application, here's how you can fix your resume and make it hireable even with no real job titles. First, you need to keep it clean. Don't use any colors or weird fonts. Use technical language like Python, React, SQL, REST API. Next, use action words such as executed, shipped, spearheaded. And finally, make sure that every bullet is quantifiable and impressive. For example, a bad resume line would read like responsible for fixing bugs. However, a good resume line would sound like fixed authentication bug, improving login success rate by 25%. So if you helped your cousin automate her Shopify store, put that down in your resume as a SaaS project. If you wrote code for a student club that helps nonprofits, congrats, you're now a software developer in your resume. But here's the thing, everything we talked about up till this point, that was about getting the interview. Now comes the hard part, passing it. And the way you pass software engineering interviews hasn't changed. You need to crush leak code. So the next thing you have to do is start leak coding, like right now. Here's the truth about leak code in 2025. It's not fun, it's not creative, and no, it's not the only skill that makes you a great engineer. But the companies who pay $150,000 a year for software engineers, they've decided that this is the game. And if you want to win, you have two options. Complain about how dumb the game is, or accept the rules and get really good at it. You've just got to live by this quote when it comes to leak code. Hate the game, not the player. Think of leak code like the ACT or SAT for software engineering internships. Are those tests perfect? Definitely not. But there's a big difference between someone who scores 24 and someone who scores a 34. It's the same in coding interviews. There's a difference between someone who can only solve easy problems and someone who crushes mediums. Lead code is basically a domain IQ test, a way to measure your problem solving skills, data structures, knowledge, and ability to think under pressure. And right now as a computer science student, there's nothing more high leverage than your lead code ability. Not another side project, not another random class, if you want the highest return on your time, if you want the best shot at big name companies and high paying offers, you need to lead code. Because at the end of the day, it's better to win the game than check out and lose. So if you haven't opened lead code yet, do it the second this video ends. I'm not joking. Like, I don't care if it's 2 a.m. and you're in bed. Open it, make an account, and do your very first problem today. Sure, it takes months to get good, but you don't need to be good enough to solve hard problems. You just need to get comfortable. To make the process easier, start with things like arrays, strings, hash tables, two-pointers, trees, DFS, and graphs. And I would recommend using the Nikon 150 and go from easy to medium. You can definitely skip the hards and they're honestly a waste of time early on. Besides, 90% of interviews will be more easies and mediums. Think of LeetCode like the gym. You won't PR on day one, but by doing five to six questions a week, that adds up fast. Now, if you're wondering what language you should use, the answer is Python. 
Why? Well, it's 30 to 40% faster to write. It's much easier to explain your solution in interviews. It's got cleaner syntax, which means you're spending less time debugging. Now, if you're not sure how to switch to Python, let me give you an easy way to get there. First, watch YouTube tutorials on how to go from your favorite language to Python. For example, search Java to Python for leak code or whatever your language is. Then make a simple syntax comparison list for stuff like loops, arrays, strings, methods, and dictionaries. Once that's done, practice solving all of your leak code in Python. Learning Python is not a big deal, but it makes a huge difference. And no, you don't need to take a course or do 20 hours a week. You just need to learn enough to not be scared of it. Trust me, being able to read in Python and tweak your code will make your life 10 times easier. Now, here's a bonus tip most students miss. The prime internship season happens in the fall. So the best time to get your internship is from August to November. This is when applications start flooding in, recruiters are actually paying attention, and early birds are getting offers. So the best time to apply would be from July to August. So if you've been building, cold emailing, fixing your resume, this is your moment. Start applying today. Now, if you're struggling to land your first software engineering internship, check out the Software Engineering Accelerator. Essentially, we help you with every single part of the process, and we guarantee the outcome as well. If you join us, you will land that internship or you invest nothing. Now, if you need help to build your resume from scratch, watch this video over here. Or if you need more advice about LeetCode, watch this video over here. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next video.